Welcome to Electron Online. Our next example, actually it's the same setup as before, we're going to assume that there's going to be an acceleration. Maybe they give you a problem like this, where you have a big mass of 20 kilogram, a small mass of 10 kilograms, an angle of 30 degrees, and they give you both the coefficient of kinetic and the coefficient of static friction, and they're asking you for the acceleration. In a way, they're trying to trick you. You'll see in just a moment why that is the case. So let's say that you're not quite sure what direction the acceleration is going to go, so you assume, all right, let's try this way. I believe this is the direction of the acceleration. Let's go find out what that is equal to. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, identify all the forces acting on the system. So we have the small mg, which we believe is going to be sufficient to provide the acceleration of the system. We have the big mg right here on the large mass, and then we're going to find the perpendicular component and the parallel component of that. So this would be mg times the cosine of theta, and this would be mg times the sine of theta. We'll have the normal force, and the normal force is going to be equal to mg cosine theta. It will be equal in magnitude, opposite in direction, big mg times the cosine of theta, and then we have the friction force. Now the direction of the friction force will be opposite to the assumed acceleration. Since acceleration system is assumed to be in this direction, we're then going to assume that the friction force will be in this direction. Force friction, which is equal to the normal force times mu. So force friction is going to be equal to big MG cosine theta times mu. And so now we've identified all the forces that will be affecting the acceleration. We have mg that will be in the acceleration because it points in the same direction. And we have these two forces, the mg sine theta and the friction force, which oppose the direction of the acceleration. So now we can write that F net is equal to the total mass of the system times acceleration. So let's go ahead and plug in what we have. So the net force is going to be all the forces aiding in the acceleration, which is small mg, minus all the forces opposing, which is big mg times the sine of theta times, oh, minus, and that would be the friction force, which is mg cosine of theta times mu sub k. We're going to use mu sub k because we're going to assume that we set the whole thing in motion. We're going to overcome the static uh, friction and then hopefully everything will accelerate after that and so that will be equal to the total mass which is little m plus big m times the acceleration so notice that we have to find the acceleration so we're going to solve this equation for a we'll divide both sides by m plus big m and turn the whole equation around so we have a is equal to mg minus mg sine of theta minus big mg cosine of theta times mu sub k, and the whole thing divided by the sum of the two masses. So let's see what we get for the acceleration in this case. When plug in the values, we have 10 times 9.8, that's 10 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second square, minus 20 times 9.8 times the sine of 30 degrees, minus, that would be 20 times 9.8, times the cosine of 30 degrees times 0 0.1 for the coefficient of kinetic friction, all divided by the sum of the two masses, 10 plus 20 kilograms. So now when we grab a calculator, let's find out what that equals to. So let's see here, let's plug in the intermediate values. So this becomes equal to 98 newtons minus, and so here we have the sine of 30, that would be 0.5 times this, that would be also 98 newtons, minus, let's see, we have 30, take the cosine of that, times, uh, times 20, times 9.8, times 0.1 equals, that would be uh, minus 17 newtons, all divided by 30 kilograms, and so that would be equal to, uh, minus divided by 30 equals, that would be a minus 0 0.566 meters per second square. So here we have kind of a strange result. We assumed acceleration in the clockwise direction. 
We did everything according to that assumption, and when we then calculate the acceleration, we get a negative answer. So our initial impulse might be, oh, maybe that means that the acceleration is in the opposite direction, and the acceleration is a minus or is a 0.566 meters per second square in that direction, but that's not the case at all. This simply means that no, there will not be an acceleration in the clockwise direction, so maybe, maybe there will be an acceleration in the opposite direction. So now we're going to try this again, but now we're going to assume acceleration is in this direction and work everything that way. Everything else will be the same except for one thing. Now the friction force will be in the opposite direction that we drew it in the first place because if the whole system will accelerate in this direction, then the friction force will be in the opposite direction. So that means that the friction force will not be this way, the friction force will be this way. And the value or the magnitude of the friction force will still be n times mu, it'll still be mg cosine theta times mu sub k. But now let's set up the equation again. But in this case, we have F net, it is mass total times acceleration, and now the net force instead of this will be as follows. So now we assume that everything will be accelerating in this direction. The force aiding the acceleration will be mg sine theta, so this will be mg sine theta, big mg sine theta, minus this force will now be opposing the acceleration, which is small mg, minus the friction force, which is big Mg cosine theta times mu sub k, and that will be equal to the total mass m plus big M times acceleration. So now when we solve that for the acceleration, we get A is equal to everything on the left side, which is Mg sine theta minus Mg minus big Mg times a cosine theta times mu sub k, and the whole thing divided by, let's see here, we have little m plus big M. And now when we plug in the values, let's see what we get this time. Now of course, mg sine theta, we already have that, that's right here. So we have A is equal to mg sine theta, which would be 98 newtons, minus little mg, and little mg would also be 98 newtons, and then minus mg cosine theta times mu, which was 17 newtons, and the whole thing divided by m plus m, and let's see what we would get. Oh, well, let's see, m plus m, that would be uh, 30 kilograms. That's the two masses added together. So again, when we divide 17 by 30, we will get a minus 0 0.566, and that would be, of course, meters per second squared. So notice that if we say, okay, we made a mistake, the acceleration is not in a clockwise direction, so therefore we assume it's going to be in a counterclockwise direction, and we plug in all the values again like we did before, with the difference is that now mg sine theta is the aiding force, the little mg is the opposing force, and the friction force will flip to the other direction. Since now the motion is in this direction, the friction force will be in the opposite direction of the motion. And then when we plug in all the values, notice again we get a negative value. We get a negative value over here, and we get a negative value over here. Which means that neither one can be a possible solution. The conclusion then is that there is no such thing as an acceleration in the system in either direction. In other words, the mass is not large enough to cause an acceleration in the clockwise direction, and it's too large to cause an acceleration in the counterclockwise direction. So therefore, the acceleration will be zero, and the system will not begin to move. And if you try to get it to move, it will simply stop and then remain stationary after that. That's how it's done.